from a scientific perspective, from the sort of research that we have conducted, um, there is something unique about, in terms of sexual arousal, about men who self-identify as bisexual. Um, from a, that specific perspective, uh, you have to say they exist. I'm Eric Jensen, I'm a researcher at the Kinsey Institute at uh, Indiana University. Uh, the Kinsey Institute is involved in uh, research on human sexuality, human sexual behavior. Bisexuality uh, is, uh, was a relatively understudied topic and uh, still is to some degree in, in terms of uh, psychophysiological studies or laboratory studies or studies on sexual arousal. What would you predict as a scientist? Um, you would say, well, we want to see something that shows that you have a bisexual arousal pattern or so, for example. So what would that mean? Uh, it could mean that you require bisexual men to become equally aroused to men or women. This has been done in some research and, and we felt that it was not necessarily the best approach because um, you could consider yourself bisexual uh, but not necessarily become equally aroused by men or women um, or turned on or not by everybody or you know it depends on context on situations on who you're with and etc so we we left the possibility there would be more variability there in this study we measured arousal using a, a little device that men can place on their penis in private and that allows us to measure uh, the, the circumference uh, of the penis as a measure of erection and uh, we also ask men after the film is completed uh, how aroused they felt during the videos. What was new about this study uh, is that uh, as far as we know this is the only study in which uh, men of different sexual orientations were presented with a video of two men having sex together including with a woman, so uh, uh, three people and uh, all three uh, were engaged in sexual activity together and only the bisexual man, the self-identified bisexual man really became substantially aroused by that. Gay men did not become very aroused by that and self-identified straight men did not become very aroused by that. I can't really say I was surprised by our findings. I was, if anything, uh, surprised by how clear cut the findings were. That um, uh, it would have been possible that, that self-identified gay men and self-identified straight men would respond relatively strongly to the depiction of two men and a woman having sex as well because it contained at least to some degree things or people that they generally are attracted by or interested in men for the gay man or, and a woman for the straight man but uh, the responses were really lower than I anticipated or expected and it was really the bisexual man who became aroused by this. From a scientific perspective I can come up with thousands of questions but we have to, before all the puzzles are solved, we have to live together and we have to share this planet together and just like uh, we see in so many other aspects of our life we're not all the same, there's variation and uh, whatever people feel is real and uh, we can uh, explore underlying mechanisms and uh, implications for it, people's responses to it, people's emotions, all those things are part of, of the larger puzzle but I think for me it all ends and starts with respect and tolerance. <laughs>